everybody, I'm Anna Kachikian and this is the Anna Report where every Wednesday I sit with you guys and we discuss dating and relationships and this week's topic is New Year's resolutions for singles. And when I say singles, I don't, I mean people who are not married yet and, and this is going to be great for both men and women actually this week um, and I'm really excited because I've got someone very special. I've got my former life coach and friend Kate Wind coming on. I have a lot to say on this topic. She has a ton to say on this topic so it's going to be a jam-packed show. Get ready. I'm actually tasting a new bottle from One Hope Wine, again, uh, because it's different bottles every week that I'm tasting. This one is the Cabernet Sauvignon, and I haven't had it yet, uh, but what's great about this bottle, before I even taste it, I want to make, make sure I mention it, is that uh, these One Hope has a cause that it backs up. So every bottle gives back to a certain cause, and so this one especially is really sweet. It actually gives back to children with autism. So really quickly, I really wanted to mention uh, the cause behind this bottle, uh, because I myself, I didn't know this, so I thought this was, this was really interesting. It said that studies have shown that ABA therapy, and ABA stands for Applied Behavior Analysis Therapy, has an 80 to 90% chance of significant improvement with children with autism. So, what One Hope does is for every 10 cases of this bottle sold, it uh, funds, you know, it, it basically funds ABA therapy for one child with autism through the ACT Today program. So I just thought, what a great cause that this ball has, and uh, for the new year, I'm going to try this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have it, and like I said, I love One Hope Wines. Um, I haven't had a bad one yet. I originally had the Red Blend, which I really liked. And then I had the Pinot Noir and I was blown away. That is my favorite wine, hands down. I'm literally, you guys, I'm not joking. Best Pinot Noir ever. Um, I will be ordering, a, a, like you're gonna, you're gonna see me and watch me and hear me talk about that Pinot Noir forever because it is one of my favorite. And I go to Napa all the time and I taste wine all the time. That was delicious. So let me try the cab now. Interesting. Usually, cat. I don't normally don't order a cat because they're they're a lot heavier for me. This one is not as heavy. It's more on the lighter side. If I didn't know, I would have almost guessed that this was a Pinot. So I'm digging it. It it has like a bitter aftertaste at the end of it. I'm I'm all for it. I'll be drinking it tonight. There it is. Really quickly, I want to say my hellos. Kate is here. Kate, I see you. Thank you so much. I'll be right there with you. We're going to bring Kate on live. Lamar says slow down. I can't slow down. I have so much to say. Kate has so much to say. I especially love this topic because um, every year right before New Year, and you, um, you probably don't know this, but um, New Year's Eve is like a big big deal for Armenians like it's bigger than Christmas um, and it's all it's it's a time where you spend with your family you welcome the new year together it's it's a big big deal you know after having these coaching uh, lessons with with Kate what I begin to realize is not only is it a big deal with family and da 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 but it's also a big deal as far as how you reflect on your year and how you plan for the new year. Uh, Mario says every holiday is a big deal with us Mexicans drinking beer all day. We're gonna call Kate. Hi Kate, it's Anna. Hi. Hector says, hey Kate, welcome. So maybe you can see the comments as well, just in case. New Year's Eve is sort of like a really big deal in the Armenian community in the sense that it's, it's, it's kind of like same thing in life and life and coaching and business where we're like, oh my gosh, it's a fresh start. You know, you spend it with family and you know, whoever you bring in the new year with is, is how you're gonna spend the year. The attitude you have is how the rest of your year is gonna go, which is wishful thinking. But, uh, <laughs> but after having the coaching with you, 
I began to realize how important reflecting on the year is uh, as far as like your personal growth goes. And because we discuss topics of dating and relationships, I thought how awesome would that be for all of us to reflect on the past year and how could we make changes and move forward in the new year uh, in 2018 as far as setting up your intentions like what do you want like what do you guys want do you want you know are you looking for you know um you know a, a blonde with big boobs or are you looking to find a girl to to settle down and have a family and build a future with right set your intention no matter what it is right just make it very clear and i've said this all year long what do you want you know and then move forward from there you're already hitting on some very key points. Like, you need a clear vision. A clear vision. So just saying, I want a relationship in 2018. What does that really look like to you? Like, put, some, put a definition behind that. For Christmas growing up, my parents always give us a trash bag. Say, don't eat five things. Have your room right. You're making room for all the new toys to come. Uh huh. You want to do the same thing when it comes to relationships. Get rid of the old. Yep. <laughs> the memories. Yep. You know, It's working. Kate Wind is coming on. She's a life coach and an astrologer. And I'm so excited because we were just on the phone with her, but I'm going to bring her on live right now. I need more wine. Okay, it's my first time going live. It's perfect. Hi, Kate. Hi, Hi everyone. Nice to see you. Yes, I have my wine. Oh, cheers. What does your cup say? It says, let's be unicorns. Nice. Cheers. Oh, it's bad. Like, when you cheers, you're supposed to drink. Right. We were on the phone talking about setting the intention. The question is, what do yes. I want? Answer the question, what do I want? And get really specific, right? Right. As, a, as yep. specific as it, it might sound when you're doing the exercise, but it really, it, it's so powerful and beneficial to do that, to really identify what you were looking for. Because you might even yeah. think that you're looking for something, and when you do that exercise, you realize, actually, that's not what I want at all. And, uh, I know a lot of the guys are going to be lazy, so they're not even going to journal this, which if you can't journal it, that's great. Uh, I think the best time, though, there are two great opportunities of doing this, okay? And you're going to do this how many times today is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You've got five more days of this when you're right before you go to sleep and in the shower. Yep. Do this yep. during that, like when your head hits the pillow, you're not on stage. There's nobody judging you. It's just you right. and your mind. When you're in the shower, you're vulnerable, you're naked, you're by yourself. Again, think of, you know, sometimes some people aren't naked or alone. But <laughs> if you, whenever you're alone, just do this. I was just saying the power of the pen. It's so important to write these down. It might sound silly, but yeah. write it down, recite it in the shower with, you know, like, say, set those intentions and then say them. The second thing is um, hanging out with more single people. I think the older we get, all our friends get married, have kids, they move on, and your entire circle becomes just a bunch of married people, and you're like, I'm not gonna hang out with these bunch of young people and go out, and so then completely out of the loop on how people date nowadays. Yeah, sometimes that can be depressing as well, you know, like thinking I'm the only one, and that's not the case. Yeah. Exactly. And you're not being a bad friend. You're not ditching your friends. Like, they're with their family. You're with your new friends. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. So, the big one, our favorite one, is cleansing yourself of any leftover feelings you might have from your past, from this year. So, if you had a breakup, if you're still having not overcome yeah. an ex from years ago, it's time to just scrimp yourself. And how, what are some things people can do to cleanse their life and their brain, their mind, their bodies of just 
all of it from from an ex because honestly it's it's no, my- so hard because then when you don't do that you are not allowing your heart to move on and open yourself up to a new person in your life it's awful yeah. That's such a loaded question, right? Because you can go back <laughs> years of tearing back all the stuff that we've built up inside. But I think one, to start with the, the tangibles, right? The magnet on the fridge from when you guys went to Disneyland. Get rid of the, those things, those triggers that remind you. Or this was his favorite sweatshirt. Or start ridding yourself of those. That that will yeah. stop the triggers to put reminders. Um, and you know, I think one of the most important parts about cleansing, like your mind of past relationships, is really identifying um, kind of like what went wrong, acknowledging those things, <laughs> so you can move past them. You know, and um, take it as a learning lesson. And I know that's so much easier said. Do you than think done. that people need closures? To, in order to do that, or you, you yourself can bring closure to yourself, and that should be good enough. That you don't need the other person. You know, yeah, everyone is going to need a different type of closure, um, but I think it is possible just to do it with yourself. It takes a lot longer, <laughs> but when yeah. you're ready, absolutely. But I think the new year is a yeah. really good time to be like, I'm going to do it now. Like, literally, like, be stubborn and say, I'm, this is it. Like, I'm doing it now. Like, this is this is my time. If, if it's now or the new year starts and there goes another year, right? Just, just set your intention I, and just do it. It's a great starting point because then, too, it's easy to track. You know, you start on the first. So two months down the line, you know, you, you know you're two months into it. You've, you've made progress. You can count. Like, it's been two months. This is what I've done. I've done X, Y, Z to get to my vision. So it's a great starting point. And what about social media? Do you think that um, it's childish to unfollow, to block, to, or does it help with the moving forward cleansing process? Because to me, like, it's not that personal. Like, it's not about you. Now it's about me. And right. I need to move on. Right. So it's okay to be yeah. selfish because it's about you now. It's about you. I, I wouldn't say it's childish because I think it's a necessary process to be able to move on. Yeah. If you if you're still seeing their post, they start eating again. None of that. Yeah. Good. And you know, a lot of people will say like, "Well, I just feel bad because I don't want to throw people away. People are people, and and when you unfollow and you block and you don't respond to their calls and their text messages, it, messages, there's a sense of like." You know, you're just kind of throwing people away, people that you once had, you know, loved or, you know, had a close relationship, friendship with. And I think that this is a form of moving forward. It's not personal. It is. And if you think every person that comes into your life has a reason, has its purpose, it's it's not that you're throwing them away. It's just that it's, it's served, the relationship has served its purpose and it's time to move on. Because on that topic, I was thinking about, you know, um, you know, being selfish and moving forward. This is about you now. Um, I also thought about, you know, the people who are givers. People who are givers, I feel like okay. they're so selfless. They just all year put everyone else before them. And uh, it's a great new right. resolution to say, you know what, this year... I'm going to, one, learn how to say no. Two, you know, I'm going to make a conscious effort effort to pamper myself, to treat myself. But this is for the givers. If you're a selfish asshole, you know, this isn't for you. This resolution isn't for you. This is for the givers, okay? Uh, yeah. You have no problem well, saying society, no, this isn't for you. Our society's kind of put a bad name on doing stuff for ourselves. And it doesn't have to be seen as selfish. But, right, we have to take care of ourselves before we take care of others. And so, yes, like, get the massage. Do, you know, go to the, the meditation class. Go to the yoga class. Like, do something for you. Because in the long run, it's going to pay off. So you can give even more if that's what you love doing. And also, givers want to give to others. You can't pour from an empty cup. So if your cup isn't full at all times, you can't give to other people. So your cup has to at least be half full for you 
the more it's filled, the more you give. So the 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 you know the more you you relax, you slept well, and all of that, the more you can give to other people. That was a huge life lesson I learned in my twenties. <laughs> yeah, it's so important. And then another thing is, you know, if you are looking to date more in the future, I always say. Be optimistic. Stay, you know, realistic about your expectations. Like, don't be like, well, you know, I'm into porn stars, and I'm just not rich enough for a porn star, so therefore I don't date. It's like, what is that? Toss that New Year's resolution out the door right now and get real, because you're a grown ass man, and you need to get real about life, especially if you want to get laid every night. Like, what is that? That is not realistic. Erica has a comment. Erica says, I think you're talking to me. Give, 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 and I end up uh, on empty. Yep. Yeah, and it sounds to me like that's what you did in 2017, and your cup is just like, everyone has literally eaten from your cup. I've I've been there. Where I was just like, I want to give. I have nothing to give. I don't know what to do. I, it's like, I, 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 I remember I didn't even have air. I couldn't even breathe. Like, I was like, all day, just like trying to breathe. And then I had to go back to, my mom's laughing because it's true. I told her, I said, I, I told my mom, I was like, I am not going into my 30s and able to breathe. I was like, that is a basic human right that I should know as an adult how to breathe. But that's what happens. You give, 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 and you can't even breathe. I can't even breathe. I had to learn how to breathe. I spent 2016 learning how to breathe. Yeah, and it's great, you know? It's But it's part of pampering yourself. Started meditating. Started exercising. Started learning how to say no, you know? Realizing your priority. But Erica, it's, trust me, if you want to be continue to be a giver, you got to stop. You gotta do you. And don't feel don't feel bad about it one bit. Yesha says, I've cut back on giving. People take kindness. I don't think you should cut back on give, give, giving. I think that you should be mindful of who you're giving to. Yeah, I was gonna say, there's a lot of people that can use the help, but it just yeah. find out uh, like who you feel the best giving for, giving to. I mean, because sometimes giving, right, can recharge you in a certain way, but make sure that you're giving to the right people and in the right way. So, Anna, do you have a New Year's resolution? Not to, not to put you on the spot, but... Oh, I have a... Are you, everybody knows my New Year's resolution. It's to soar. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of New Year's resolutions this year, like, but they all involve soaring. You know, and I did, I did clean out my, uh, my space, you know, I got rid of everything that reminded me of my ex-boyfriend and, um, and one of the first things, by the way, you don't realize it, your phone, you, if you scroll through trying to find an old photo, what was it? Somebody was asking me a photo the other day and it was like from a couple years ago and I had to scroll and I was like, oh, fuck me. You know, get, first of all, get rid of all the photos in your phone. Or what about when Facebook does like the two year reminder anniversary and then it's (laughs) something you're like, uh, nope, unfollow, block, all of it from social media. Because listen, it's not fair. Um, A lot of people have private social accounts but people like you and I who have businesses our social life is open to the public so it's not fair that my life is publicized and and, and you have access to it meanwhile I don't have access to your life so I play fair it's not fair so if I don't have access to your life you don't have access to my life and it's not about him it's about me it's about how I choose how how what makes me feel better it's all about me it's not about him anymore yeah honestly all that is is you're setting boundaries like no one cares you because you're just setting boundaries of what you find acceptable and what you don't exactly oh and i mean boundary right boundaries are a huge thing to talk about in relationships people can't i'm so happy you brought it up yeah you have to go right ahead i'm we're all listening <laughs>
<laughs> well, I don't know how much else I, you know, I want to talk, talk about that right in pertains to this. Um, but, you know, when people want to criticize you for the, the um, for thing, you know, people are criticizing you for that. How, how does someone have a right to do that if that's what makes you feel the most comfortable? Yeah. Right? Not being childish. It's not, if you have your reasoning and that's a boundary that makes you feel comfortable, you have every single right to do that. And then a, a part of the, another New Year's resolution would be to really not give a shit what other people <laughs> That's enough. That's the most- I personally conquered that, like, from my TMC days, you know, when people would be like, you have big no, you have a big, and it's like, I don't give a shit what you have to say, you know, it's like, I don't think that about myself, or I, I do, but it's okay, like, someone says it's too difficult, and you know what, so, I love this comment, but it's too difficult comment, and I don't know if that's if, she, if she's talking about what we're talking about right now, like specifically setting boundaries is too difficult. Um, it is very difficult, and um, and I think that a lot of people set new resolutions and they fail because they think that it happens overnight. Right. But these resolutions are like you're, you say, I'm gonna spend an extra amount of time on this. Like me in 2016, I said, I'm gonna spend my whole year learning how to breathe. Yeah. No, you're right, it doesn't happen overnight. And I think something that we talked about but we didn't like go into too much yeah. depth is talking about how you know you set those goals. Setting the goals is easy, right? I wanna lose 20 pounds, I wanna have a boyfriend, I wanna, um, you know, be more successful in my career. Those things are easy to say, but when you start writing down, what would I actually have to do to make that come true? <laughs> and then listing things that you're willing to do. I think that people don't have the tools, like the right questions to ask, you know? So you have to give them the specific tools on what specifically they need to ask themselves. Like for example, um, you know, for example, it's like, what do you want? Get very specific. Do you want yeah. a long-term relationship, or you know, are you looking to meet someone that you can post to in 2019? Are you looking to just date a lot of girls? Like, what is your goal in 2018, just for the year? And it's in it, and it's baby steps. It is. But, but how powerful is it though at the end of the year to look back and then like for you about learning how to breathe, right? Exactly. Oh, so that, hard. But now to look back on that. Yeah, but the thing is, in 2017, that was my resolution, but I was breathing. I, I, I did it. You know, I did it, we're done. Now, and then it was like a new thing in 2018, it's soaring. Like, <laughs> so so every year you do you do little things and you work towards it. And I think a lot of people get discouraged. They yeah. stop. And so that's what does that give you to look back on 2016 and know that you moved, that you accomplished your goal? Right, does that exactly. feel like a sense of fulfillment and, and confidence? Yeah. It, I said, I set out to do that, and I did it. Yeah. Another thing that I said in 2017 that I did, I'm really proud of, I and uh, was to not use the word hate. I didn't want to say I hate that. I hate this person. I hate that. I hate this. Like I just was like, stop saying that. And I realized every time I was angry and I was like, I hate. I would, I would stop myself. I would stop, and just the stopping myself process made me go back and think about what am I grateful for? Who gives a shit about this? Right. Like I have, I have so much to be grateful for that this little, you know, pizza that they serve that's wrong that I ate. Yeah. Right. Who gives a shit? It'd just be like, um, I don't like the pizza. Somebody make me a new pizza, or I'm gonna work somewhere else. It just, it changes your perspective when you make these resolutions. It does. You know? Um, and, it, and it's funny because I actually have a friend who uses the hate word often. And I realized mid-year that every time I would hear it, it would trigger something in my mind because I had trained myself. Like, I told myself, don't use that word. And it worked. It worked because when she would say it, it would trigger this thing in my body. Like, ugh don't say that word. I love that. One of my girlfriends that's, um, that's watching right now for uh-huh. Christmas had given me this jar and it, there was a little poem on it about every time you see a penny to pick it up and put it in the jar and when you put it in the jar you have to say something that you're thankful for. 
And yeah. just kind of like you, right? You're redefining how you see things, how you hear things. Now, every time I see pennies on the floor, it reminds me to say something I'm thankful for. It's that it can be so simple to change your whole thought process. Just even like you said, removing one word or removing the word stupid from your language or hate is a great one, especially with, with where we are, you know, yeah. society as a whole. That would be yeah. great with that word. And it, it worked. I'm telling you now it's, it's, uh, it's, I don't, I don't, I don't use it as much. And when I do, I stop myself before I even use come, the word comes out. And uh, I've had a situation where people are like, what, what, what were you saying? I was like, oh, nothing. I like stop myself. But this brings yeah. me to my next thing, which is people need to smile more. So I, so I take a lot of photos for social media. I take a lot of photos for my friends and my family. I'm like the phone lady. I'm, I'm, I'm the phone picture lady, right? To a point where we had cousins Christmas last night, and my uncle texts me and says, "Photos, please." Like, he didn't text anybody else, just me. So with that said, I'm always telling people when I take photos to smile. And I have so many friends this year who tagged me in their Instagram photos and said, I smiled because of you. I smiled because I thought of you. And psychologically, it's been proven that when you smile, you are just naturally happier. And the aura that you, the energy that you put out is positive. Yeah. So that, if you don't smile, like I'm always smiling. I, I'm, 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 I'm always smiling. I'm, smiling so much that when my gay friends take a picture of me, they go, can you zip it? <laughs> can you just give me that bitch look? And I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Right. I just smile. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, I, it's like, it could be a sexy pose and I'm still like, eh. yeah. Just this, you know? So, but I practice that. I practice that. And if that is not something that you normally do, get it done. And which is why I love dentists. I, where by dentist. I wish I was a dentist. I wish I married a dentist. Like I'm obsessed <laughs> with dentists, right? Because it's so important. So a lot of people will say, well, I don't have nice teeth. And I'm like, buy less shoes and get your teeth fixed. Right, right. You prioritize what's important to you. Uh, you know, when dentists, I see commercials for dentists talking about your smile, you will bring happiness to your life. I don't think it's bullshit. It's true. Like it's that one commercial marketing tactic that is real. It's so real. Um, smiling is so important. Do you smile in your photos, Kate? I feel like I'm always smiling. <laughs> and yeah. Like, even like in the sexy pictures, I'm like, this is like stupid. <laughs> but I think like the larger point to what you're saying, if you want to like pull it back to dating, is this whole idea like what you put out there, right, is what you're going to get back in return. We want to manifest and surround ourselves with what we want to be attracted to us. So smiling is a great place to start with that. Tell me about how your astrology business is going. Yeah, my astrology business is going great. I find it just very fulfilling. Um, I specialize in one-on-one -on -one astrology appointments um, with my clients based on their exact birth information. So birth time, date, and place. Um, I also do uh, a lot of group parties where I do smoke readings, uh, tarot card readings. Oh, I brought um, my angel cards if you want to end today's session. Angel card for you. <laughs> I figured we could do Let me like, grab my wine. Okay. <laughs> Okay. You could do. I'm gonna put some intentions on these cards for you. Um, mm -hmm. I think you could do like a projection for 2018. Okay. Um, and angel card readings. You know, anyone that has is new to astrology or new to any sort of angel. Um, sorry, any energy work. Angel cards are always very positive. Uh, so we'll just pull a card for you for 2018. Okay. Let's see if I can read this backwards. So it says, spread your wings. What a perfect card for 2018. It says, do not hold back right now. The timing is perfect and you are ready to soar. Shut up. Stop. <laughs> Stop. It says it. It says soar? Can you read that? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Right, sore is your word, isn't it? Too, sore you're... is my word. I see it. <laughs> it wasn't, now it is. I love it, but what a great intention for 2018. You'll do amazing at every, anything that you do, and I know you're still growing your business and your brand, so 
what a great way to start. Oh my goodness. Amazing. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> oh. That was the image on the car was card was spreading your wings. Yep. Spreading your wings and just yeah. soaring while you're giving. Just give <laughs> while you soar. Yeah. It's literally like a bird that's just flying up and just dropping a bunch of toys and gifts and money for everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much, Emma, for today. I will talk to you soon. Hopefully, we'll do your reading for 2018 for the astrologer. 100%. Okay. Thank you so much, Kate. Okay. Have a good night you. and happy new year. Happy new year, everyone. All right. Can you guys believe she pulled the soaring card? Oh, man. All right. So, I wanted to say cheers to you guys. I want to say that before the new year starts, take some time hour, two hours, reflect on your year, okay? Think about all the good things that happened to you. Think about all the bad things that happened to you. Think about all the mistakes that you made. Be honest with yourself. Think about all the people that you've affected in positive and negative ways. Don't leave out the negative. We learn a lot from our mistakes, okay? I made a huge mistake today and I, and I learned my lesson. So make, learning from your mistakes is very, very important. Again, your resolutions shouldn't be so big. Like I said, mine was to learn how to breathe, okay? But that was really important for me, right? So if you're struggling with, you feel like the whole weight of the world is on your shoulders and you're incapable of breathing, take the year and learn how to breathe. I did it, it worked, there are ways. And if you want me to help you, email me, I will help you. You can do it. So, cheers to the new year. I, again, am having the Cabernet Sauvignon from One Hope. And this specific bottle, as I said, this one specifically gives back to children with autism. It's a great cause. If you guys want to help the cause, if you are a wine drinker, if you want to taste these wines, if you want to check it out, I have put my link on all over my social apps. I want you guys to go order from these and you will see what causes they support. I drink wine all the time on the show and you guys have always said to me, why won't you, you know, partner with one of these companies? And I did it because, like I said, I wanted to make sure it was the right company. And One Hope is great because, like I said, it, there's a cause behind every bottle. So every time I drink it, I feel good about it. And you know what? It's delicious fucking wine. So if you want to order yours and help a cause, order it. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I will see you guys in the New Year. Bye.